welcome to North Georgia Now Today. Today is Monday, and if y'all pay attention, you know that Monday the smart one is always here. Well, we also have a smart teenager who's going to be here today, and his smart daddy rounded me up some things. I called out over the air the other day, and I said, if you have information about Georgia Marvel, please contact me. Well, they came through again. They called you. But I got a bonus. They also gave me a 1970 newspaper the year I moved to Jasper. And guess who's in the newspaper? It ain't me. It's my mama. <laughs> my mama. Because every, every week they had this thing, what do you think? And they asked questions of people, just random people in the, on the street, and my mama happened to be one of them. And that, that, that week the question was, do you think that gun legislation will reduce crime? And 95% of the people said, no, really, don't you see? No, really, don't see how it could help. Okay, no, I really don't see how it could. No, I really think it's a good thing they have it. My mama said, no, I don't think it will. So there's a picture of everybody in Jasper. I think that is so cool. What do y'all think about if we went on the air and we asked questions about, there's my mom in the middle, about where my hand is. But I said, you know, why don't we ask a question, maybe one day a week, let's have a question and let's open the phone lines and let's see what people really think. Because just from talking to folks, everybody's worried to death about the election. Everybody's worried to death about fuel prices. Everybody's worried about their jobs. You know, and it's something maybe we should have an open mic day. What you think? That sounds like a winner to me. Sounds like a winner to me. As long as you don't get me. too political. Well, you're the smart one, right? That's the that's. Hey, the I want to ask you a question. What? 1970. Is that everybody that lived in Jasper? No. That's what you said. No, they asked. No, did you said, I say You said that? here's everybody in Jasper. <laughs> It's everybody My that goodness. matters in their Jasper. Population is, their, their population has exploded <laughs> since Well, let me tell you, this is so cool because it also had an article um, by Jimmy Townsend. Who did you know, Jimmy Townsend? Uh, I know a Mr. Well, Townsend. He was kind Same of a guy. character, and he wrote he wrote an article for the paper. And we could subscribe. Now, listen, y'all. We could subscribe to the Progress in the year I moved to Jasper for four dollars and twelve cents a year. Ooh. A year. That was also the year that gas was 23.9. Jasper Drugstore was in business at that time. We can only dream. And they had, as as they still do today, which is very funny to me, prescription service 24 hours a day. I can remember having to go there and get a prescription in the middle of the night. I'll tell you somebody who's not in business, and it just breaks my heart. Compounding prescriptions is our business, built on service, maintained on friendship. Now, we're going to have a trivia question. We appreciate your patronage. Pleasing you is our business. Have your doctor phone us your prescriptions for fast service. Prescription specialist. Now, if you live south of Jasper, you might know the name of this pharmacy. If you can tell me the name of the pharmacy that is no longer in business, owned by two family names. Next to the railroad precious, tracks. Precious, precious, precious men. Bill, what number do we gonna have them call? Well, BR5, no, that's not it. No, um, that's not it. 1-866-939-TODAY. Guess what they're gonna win. The I music. am so excited. Barry Scott and Second Wind. This is Barry Scott and Second Wind's debut CD. And I'm gonna tell you something. I've listened to it all weekend. It is phenomenal. It is awesome. You will hear shortly a song on here that Barry wrote in honor of his dad called Daddy's Dream. And it is wonderful. And we're not getting a close-up on that, and I don't know why. We have a technical difficulty. There you go. Barry Scott and Second Wind in God's Time. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is perfect. Here's All Red Jordan Drugstore. There you go. Who's the winner? That's down there at the, near the old depot in Tate. That's right. Gail Ray, Gail Ray, Gail Ray just won Barry Scott and Second Wind in God's Time. And uh, this is phenomenal. He is, I was so proud of him this weekend. We had a little, uh, I call it my one day vacation. In one day, we covered a lot of ground. And we went to see Barry Abernathy and Barry Scott. 
Um, I only stayed for their part of the concert, and then we leave, which is a pretty good compliment to them because we paid $35 a person to get in. Wow. And we didn't even stay to see Doyle Lawson because hmm. all I was there for was to see the local boys. And I have some pictures we're going to share with y'all in a little bit. But a lot of local talent. Barry Abernathy did a great job. Barry Scott was phenomenal. And Barry Scott, y'all be proud, hometown boy. Folks were lined up down the road to get his autograph. So, so, sounds like you. I saw him doing that to yeah, you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. your national book signing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but it was, it was fun, a good day. He was playing outside Cherokee, North Carolina. From there, we crossed across the mountain and went to... Um, Took some pictures up on the mountain and then went by, turned to Townsend and went to Cades Cove. And it was my first trip all the way through Cades Cove. That's but pretty. we did it actually three times because we weren't going to leave until the bodyguard got to see a bear. Well, guess what? Dark. Here comes the bear. Guess what doesn't work at dark? Tell camera. Me. Your camera don't work at dark? My camera would not get a flash of this bear because by then I had taken pictures of a hundred deer, a bunch of turkey, a bunch of scenery. I'd basically run my battery down, and then here comes the bear. So in other words... <laughs> and it wasn't a Chicago bear playing. <laughs> so in other words, we just have to take your word for it that you saw a bear. We saw, and Gail Ray can attest to it because they were there you, too. You have no proof. Oh, I don't. I don't. But I, I do say that I, I don't know that I don't know that I would get out like they did and wander up to the bear. Well, there's only one solution to that. If the bear starts coming at y'all, all, all you got to do is outrun the other people. That's right, and let the bear have them. That's right. Okay. So. That's why I stayed in the car, though. Oh. But they did. There was two, uh, I think, a cub up in a tree and then the mama coming back to it. That's a time you don't want to be seeing bears. No. I've had that situation uh -huh. one time, uh -huh. and uh, I was about 30 yards from my mama and their, her two cubs, and I just stood still as a statue. Very protective, aren't they? Very, Very much. Very protective. Right. Well, well, it was a good weekend, and it was a short vacation, but it was nice. And this is what I would call my vacation week, because I took Saturday and pretty much loafered all day. And then I took Sunday and I chilled all day. And I went swimming and hung out and just, you know, so nice weekend. Very nice weekend. What did you do this weekend? Well, uh, I went to a concert over in Gainesville. They had a nice concert over there. They had uh, Mike Upright was the solo opener and uh, Gold City was there and the Triumphant Quartet who really outdid themselves. Jeff Stice was tremendous. And of course we had church yesterday. And you have a new pastor. Tell us about him. I have a new pastor. His name is Ben Mock down at Mount Zion Baptist Church. He's uh, been on the mission field in Ecuador for over about 30 years. Now listen. But he's a, now, he's now a Georgia this native. Is just, this is just my opinion. If you've been in Ecuador eating for 30 years, are you not thrilled to death to get to Jasper, Georgia? <laughs> Do you know what kind of cooks we have in Jasper, Georgia? Very good ones. We got some good ones. Yeah. And what is your saying? Well, if we ain't eating, we ain't meeting. That's right. That's right. That's because so I'm a Baptist. Has he so. been to any of y'all's homecoming dinners? He or? has. He's been up here several times. He visits on furlough and stuff. But he's from mm -hmm. Georgia originally, and he's just been down there working all these years, and he adopted two precious kids and brought them with him and his wife. And uh, I think we're going to try to have him on the show sometime, let you guys meet That'll them. That'll be and, neat. Yeah, uh, that'll be neat. And over the weekend, we heard, too, that uh, changing gears here, comedian George Carlin, age 71, died. Uh, mm -hmm one of the filthiest mouth men in the show business. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to say happy 47th wedding anniversary to my mom and dad over in Cartersville. I asked my mother this morning, I said, what are y'all going to do today? You going to go out to eat or whatever? And she said, well, your dad's going to go out in the yard and pick me some dandelions. And I'm allergic to those too, by the way. <laughs> so way to go, dad. <laughs> So he'll probably wind up going fishing today, I'm sure. Your daddy's thrifty, and that makes sense. Well, he's just a good old boy. He's he old-fashioned. He, he likes to go fishing three or four but, days a but week. But let me tell you something. Your daddy will spend money to see a certain group, and we're going to show this certain group. Well, he don't usually spend the money. Usually, usually I let him come in for free. I usually so. let him come in for free. That's the <laughs> truth. So that's a hint. But I want y'all to tell me. I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you this picture. There are two men on this picture on each end. This one is a guitarist, and I bet, I'll bet bet you money, if you love gospel music like I do, you have seen this guitarist right here. And then I'll bet you, if you followed the inspirations years ago, you know who this man is. So if you can tell me these two men, now one of them, keep in mind, 
He was never an inspiration, but he plays the guitar today, every weekend, for a group based out of Tennessee. And he is, I think he's one of the reasons that group is so, so successful. So, oh, so. guitarist on one side and a singer on the other side who is no longer with the Inspirations, but was for many years. And um, honestly, this is the first picture of him I've ever had in my hand because I've had some album covers, but never a picture. And you will see that the man who has signed the picture is 6494 Mike Holcomb from Tate slash Jasper, Georgia. And if you can tell me who those two people are, and, and if you follow gospel music, I know you know one, one family group has an awesome guitarist who actually sits in. The reason he's in this picture, he played in the music sessions for mm -hmm. the inspiration. He also does, if you look on a lot of uh, gospel music, if you look on the flip side of the CDs, You'll mm -hmm. see his name on a lot of those right. as the guitar player. Right. He does a lot of studio work, That's too. That's right. So, Bill, what number will they call? 1-866-939-2329. Uh, 2329. And you will also win Barry Scott and Second Wind in God's Time. And this is the only thing I saw wrong with it. You know, I've looked it over and over and over, and I cannot find We Shall Inherit. It ain't on. We can't put it on every CD, you know. Well, I think it ought to be a law. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it ought to be a law. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Hey, and congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs uh, college baseball team. They're in the College World Series out in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, they're playing the best two out of three with the Fresno State team. So it's the Bulldogs versus the Bulldogs. And, and you know, you know how I love racing. This weekend, racing's number one family lost a family member. Connie Coletta's son, Scott, was killed drag racing this weekend. I started out drag racing, and Connie Coletta was like one of my idols, you know. So 300 like, miles an hour, I heard it. 300 once. miles an that'll hour. That'll kill you. Yeah, that'll, that'll hurt you. But uh, Scott was not, he's about your age, He's 46, actually. I heard. Yeah, yeah, about your age. So, about your age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 46. Close. Pretty close. <laughs> Pretty close. You're not uh, jealous, are you? No, no, I'm not. Okay. But <clears throat> anyway, um, you know, it's good. Drag racing won't be the same. It won't be the same because that family's been involved for a long, long time. So My buddy, my bass singer in my group, he said, uh, the best way to become a millionaire in drag racing mm -hmm. is to start out as a billionaire. Mm -hmm. That's it's right. pretty expensive, I hear. That's right. It is expensive. But a lot of people are into drag racing much more than when I went. You know, we might have five dozen people show up for a race. Yeah. <clears throat> it was very different, but that was in the 60s, you know, mm. back when I was a child. Go child, ahead and say it. Yeah. Yes, never, back when I was a child. Been. Well, we you don't. <laughs> Listen, we don't have obits loaded up today, so we're going to have to rough it through them. But let me tell you, today's obituaries are brought to you by the Nifty Fifties Cafe, located at 100 Bridge Street in McKaysville. I was there last week. Great place, great people. Uh, let's see. Logan Funeral Home announces the service for Mrs. Geneva Coker Hensley, age 81, of Cumming, formerly of Ella J. Her services will be, funeral arrangements are incomplete, will be announced later. And Billy Joe Lively, age 54, wow, of Ella J, died Friday, June the 20th. The funeral is today, Monday, from the chap from Bernhardt Funeral Home. And you can call them for, let's see, does it say where? It doesn't tell me where. <clears throat> Mrs. Kenneth Keith Kennedy, Jr., Mr. Kenneth Keith Kennedy, Jr., age 68, Kusawati Community, you know, I've never been there. That's I need not, to go by there. It's a neat little place. And the memorial services will be in Ocala, so he, met, he must be one of those folks who moved here because this is such a wonderful place to live. Kenneth Keith Kennedy, Jr., and uh, he will have a memorial later. His services <clears throat> are also handled by Logan Funeral Home. So thanks to those folks for getting us that information this morning. And... Remember, the obituaries are brought to you by the Nifty Fifties Cafe located at 100 Bridge Street in McKaysville, and it is easy, easy to find. You can go out to the Nifty Fifty and do the doo-wop. <clears throat> you can. If you know how. Now, right now, we're going to share the Father's Day photos again one more time because today you're going to hear for the first time Daddy's Dream by Barry Scott. This is a song that he wrote in honor of his dad. It's a good song. It's a thoughtful song, but it's not We Shall Inherit. So I want you to sit back and enjoy this wonderful song 
And then I'm going to bring you my CD tomorrow and play Wishland here. But y'all sit back and enjoy this. And when we come back, guess who's in the house? How about Barry Scott's dad, Floyd? This song was written in honor of him, and we want to talk to him a little bit about what it's been like to see his child have a talent that is finally getting out there, and we're so proud of him. So let's go to the Father's Day pictures. We'll be back shortly with Barry Scott's dad, Floyd. Praise God, we shall have a new body someday. Though I err here to sin, the temptations of life no
Not long ago, I reminiscing with my mom. We talked about the day that I was born. She said your dad had always hoped we'd have a son. A boy that he would someday be proud of. Someone that he could teach his music to. In hopes that fame and fortune you'd pursue. And though he's never had the chances that you've had. I know he's just as happy to be your dad. Son, you're living out your daddy's dream And when he hears the crowd applaud his boy To him it's the greatest thing So every time you walk out on the stage to sing Remember, son, you're living out your daddy's dream I remember waking up to the sound A static on an AM radio He'd be listening to the Grand Ole Opry And he was wishing that someday he could be Standing on that stage and singing his hit song Hearing old Grant Turner bring him on And if he had it to do over again A country star is what he would have been And I remember those long practice nights My dad would keep me up Until I got it right He'd say one more time, then you can go to bed And I never ever question what he said Now thirty years ago seems like yesterday Since my daddy taught me how to sing and play And looking back I'd never want to change a thing I know I'm living out my daddy's dream Son, you're living out your daddy's dream And when he hears the crowd applaud his boy To him it's the greatest thing So every time you walk out on the stage to sing Remember, son, you're living out your daddy's dream. Son, you're living out your daddy's dream. And when he hears the crowd applaud his boy, in his eye there's a gleam. So every time you walk out on the stage to sing, remember, son, you're living out your daddy's dream. Every time you make that flat top guitar ring Remember son, you're living out your daddy's dream
Some of these days when we reach heaven Where there'll come no wrong Hallelujah. Oh, what a day That wonderful day will be As we stand in the countless number There'll be joy to share in heaven. Oh, what a day That wonderful day will be Oh, what a day, what a happy day There's gonna be singing and shouting Joy to the saints All the happy saints on the morning of the Jubilee just to put on a crown that's given And to walk around all over God's heaven Oh, what a day, that wonderful day will be will be rejoicing just to reach home at last oh what a day that wonderful day will be oh what a day what a happy day there's gonna be singing and shouting joyful oh, saints, 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 saints on the morning of the jubilee just to put on a crown that's given and to walk around all over god's heaven oh what a day that wonderful day will be Shouting, joyful the saints, the saints, 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 saints on the morning of a jubilee. Just to put on a crown that's given and to walk around all over God's heaven. Oh, what a day that wonderful day will be. Oh, what a day that wonderful day will be. being at a Barry Scott concert. Woo, that's all the music we heard this weekend. I hope y'all enjoyed your pictures once again. We decided because the Father's Day contest wasn't as long as Mother's Day, we wanted to share your pictures again. And what better time to do it than the day that the debut of Barry Scott's song, Daddy's Dream, comes out. So that is, that is awesome. Now it's time to go to the news. When we come back, you're gonna to get to meet and talk to Barry's dad, Floyd, who is the reason Daddy's Dream happened. And uh, we didn't have a contest winner for the last question I asked, so I'm going to make it really simple on you when we come back. So just hang around. We'll be right back. Let's go to Miss Hannah. Hello everyone, I'm Hannah Baker with your North Georgia Now Today News. Charles Hand, the organizer of the Children, Children's Miracle Network Miracle Mile Hot Rod Show, joins me now about the upcoming event. Thank you so much for being with me today. Now, tell me first of all, what is the Miracle Network all about? The Miracle Network helps children in all over the, the country. It was actually started by the Osborne family. Mm -hmm. What they do is uh, children that need care for cancer, lungs, and a lot of other diseases that people can't pay for. It's totally free, free for the children. So to get involved with helping make pay for these things, we put on a hot rod show. Right. Now you were telling me a few minutes ago that actually there's a lot of children that 
get to use the Miracle Network. How many children are in our area that have used this before? In the Tri-County of Gilmer, Pickens, and Fanning, 3,500 children last year received the aid from the network at no expense to the families whatsoever. And that's the reason I'm involved. Uh, I don't have the breakdown for each county, mm -hmm. but uh, it'll probably be more this year with gas prices and things that's causing people to, you know, suffer a little bit more. Right. Well, definitely the, the breakdown you know, whether it's more in one county or the other, but 3,500 children, that's a lot of children in our area that do need medical assistance and sometimes don't have families that can help pay for that. So first, tell us how did you get involved in the Miracle Network? The Walmart helps the LJ Lions Club with what we call White Christmas, which is to help needy kids with Christmas every year. Corporate Walmart came last year and was involved with distribution and they asked uh, this year if I would help with the Children's Miracle Network. And so I said, yeah. I decided to put on a hot rod show, solid auction, a big barbecue. Of course, we'll have entertainment to raise money. Our um, goal is $25,000 to help the network. Uh, right now, we're in process of setting up the auction. We have stuff donated. Uh, like for people to come out and support this network, I'd like to invite everybody out. Mm -hmm. We'll have some fabulous cars there that people want to see, but the primary reason is to make money for the network where the, we can continue to support the children that need the help with cancer and lung diseases. You said that you have been working with children for a long time now. My first time starting with working with children was in 1970, which makes 37 years. Yep. Why is it so important to you to work with children? I love kids. It's Got some of my own simple grandkids. As, simple as that, and they need our support. So now tell us where the actual event is going to be held, um, what time, and is there any admission fee or anything like that for people to come by? It's at Walmart on Highway 515 in LJ, mm -hmm. if you want to come, if cars entering have to pay to enter, mm -hmm. that's how we're raising money. But if you want to come by and visit, uh, there's no charge. Uh, we're going to have chicken dinners that you can buy. You can bid on the auction stuff. Just look at the cars. Uh, we, cars start coming in about 7. We figure people come in about 10. Going to try to give away the trophies about 4 o'clock. If everybody, when the cars leave, if they want to, we're going to have a street dance. How fun. Just put on something to raise money for the network. Right. So how, how much is it for uh, cars to register? If they pre-register, it's $25. If they pre-register for two chicken dinners, then it's $35. Mm -hmm. It's $30 to register the day of the, the show. Okay. So you guys, how many cars are you expecting to be there? We'd like to have at least 300. Uh, we don't have that many spaces, but we'll. Right. Uh, Walmart has said if, if the more cars that come, the, the bigger we'll get. Right. Well, great. Uh, the more cars come, the more money we make. The more money we make, the more we can do for children. Right. And this is hopefully going to be an ongoing event, and that this will be an annual event every year. They want this to be the, the first one, and they don't want it to be the last. Well, thank you so much for being here. Now, again, this is going to be this Saturday at the Ella J. Walmart um, off of 515, and there's a lot. If you're not exactly into cars, there's all kinds of entertainment and food and things for the kids, street dances, but there's also a lot of beautiful cars that will be there too. So thank you so much for coming in today, Charles, and uh, we look forward to seeing you this Saturday at the Children's Miracle Network Hot Rod Show. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you. Well, the GED graduation was held last week at Appalachian Technical College. North Georgia Now Today went to that graduation to hear some of the inspiring stories of those individuals who have worked so hard to receive their GED. A friend asked, how would you support your young daughter if something ever happened to your husband? Without an education, I was stuck. 
facing no skills and a dead-end job with no future. I wanted and needed a job that I was passionate about, or, ever, or ever, otherwise every day would be drudgery. My greatest joy comes from being around children, so I decided I want to be a teacher. I couldn't become a teacher without an education. Motivation leads a person to action. I began that process by attending classes twice a week at the Cherokee Learning Center. Without motivation, I would not be standing before you this evening as a GED graduate. I am an example that no matter what obstacles are thrown your way, no matter what your age, with a little motivation and a little dedication, you can accomplish anything. Accomplishments have never come easy in my life. Values of life was just fragments in my mind as a kid. Uh, as a child, I was never given a chance to succeed, no matter how hard I tried to succeed. Obstacles such as being forced out on my own at the age of 12, doing drugs, becoming a single mother at the age of 18, were always there to block my path. As the years passed, passed by, I tried different occasions to obtain my GED six or seven different times. However, these barriers and walls prevented me from accomplishing my task. For many years I've dreamed of ob obtaining my GED. I dreamed my dream today become a reality. This day has been a long and hard time coming. However, I can honestly stand before you tonight and say I wouldn't change a single thing. I know it is all part of God's plan for my life. Overcoming each barrier has made me the strong Christian woman I am today. I feel so honored to be standing here tonight. It's an experience I never thought I would have. I am grateful for the adult learning centers we have here in Gilmer County and the surrounding areas. I would like to send a special thank you to Heidi Schuler, Libby Branch, and Diane Ingram. They always believed in me even when I didn't. As she said, my name is Amy Bishop and I am 32 years old and I have four wonderful children and a great husband who have all been very supportive to my goals in life. <clears throat> I just want to say, I would just like to say that Completing my GED has provided me with confidence and encouraged me to believe that I can accomplish anything that I set my mind to. For many years, I have wanted to receive my cosmetology license, and now that I have my GED, I have enrolled and already completed my first quarter. And I will graduate from cosmetology winter of 2009. Tonight, we are here to celebrate. Congratulations, graduates, 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, 2008. Well, it's always wonderful to see people reach their goals. Congratulations to all those who received their certificate this past week. Back to you, Sherry. Well, guess who's getting married? Guess who's getting married? If y'all haven't seen Miss Hannah's wedding announcement, it was in the progress last week. It was in Gilmer County. Going to be in Fannin County. I think he got a gym. I don't know what kind of guy he is, but I think he got a gym. So there you go. Miss Hannah's wedding and is coming up in October, and um, it's going to be First Baptist. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. So, so her name's going to be Towns. Huh? Her name is going to be Towns. So now you're going to have another Hannah. Mrs. T in here. Mrs. T. Another <laughs> Mrs. T. That's right. That's right. Well, we are joined by Floyd Scott, who happens to be... The reason Barry Scott is what he is today. For good, bad, or ugly, he's yours. Now he's good. He's doing great, Floyd. He sure Aren't is. you proud of him? Yes. Yeah, I sure am. Um, we was talking a little while ago about the uh, Bluegrass Festival. They done a it was awesome. A great job up there. It was you know, awesome. And people really enjoyed them. And you you could tell that. Well, I took photos that we're going to show because. As Barry came off the stage, people just started lining up and lining up, and they were standing in line in the heat waiting to get the boy's autograph. And I just started snapping some pictures because I thought, that's pretty cool. This is just a, a boy from Gilmer County, Georgia, who has worldwide recognition. Did you get his autograph? <laughs> <laughs> I think I already check. had it, Bill. Oh, I want okay. a check. <laughs> yeah. Hey, son, write me a check. Um, he has so much talent. And now, finally, you know, it's taken him a couple of years after leaving Doyle to get it together because it, it was stepping out on faith. It was risky business. He left sure. a secure, secure job and walked into, um, he didn't really know where he was headed, did he? No. He's written a lot of stuff now. 
And and I was looking at this about, is it about eight of these Barry wrote? Uh, I believe that's right. I think there's about eight of them mm -hmm. that Barry wrote. And, and, and I tease him all the time about We Shall Inherit being my favorite because it is the ringtone on my phone. Mm -hmm. But um, he's written a lot of stuff, a lot of thoughtful things. And you can tell he really, his mind is deep and he thinks about things and coming home matters to him and, and being your son matters to him and, and he writes about things that really matter to him. It sure does. Um, when you start out, like he said, when he left Knowledge, going to uh, start out on his own there, it, it's tough to, uh, for quite a while to ever get started with a, oh, yeah. with a, with a new group, you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, and it took him quite a while to you know, pick out the band members and and he tried out several and everything, but I think he's really got some good boys with him now, good Christian boys. And the 15-year-old who plays the banjo? <laughs> well, he's fantastic. What is his <laughs> name? Uh, Zane Petty. Zane Petty. Z Zane Petty. He is, was he the Tennessee State Champion? Mm. He won some kind of awards. He did, but I'm not sure what it was. Uh, well, he Jerry. is amazing. And when he started with Barry, he was 14 years old. That's right, yeah. And, um, you know, his parents kind of stepped out on faith to let a young kid like that travel with a bunch of old guys. Old guys, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a lot younger than me. But um, his parents stepped out on faith, too, because that's that's an adjustment for a 14-year-old kid. Now, he's homeschooled, isn't he? Oh, I b yeah, believe that's right. Yeah, yeah, so that's the only way he could travel the way they travel. Yeah. But mm -hmm. now there are the pictures from Saturday, okay. and um, the crowd was wonderful. Barry got a standing ovation. Um, CD sales were great, and it was the debut of this CD that we're giving away today. And um, it was just great to see that hometown face and, and, and the people standing up clapping and getting into his music. So. It's amazing how much uh, local talent there is in the Tri-County area. It is unreal. Here. It is unreal. Between uh, country music, uh, gospel music, bluegrass mm -hmm. music. Right, goes right. On and on. Well, now, when will Barry be close enough to home singing that people can see him? Do you know what his tour dates are? No, I really don't. Uh, Sherry, I know they're going to be back at another bluegrass festival in August up there. Guess uh, where he's going to be Thursday, Floyd. Yeah, I know where he's going to be Jasper, Thursday. Jasper, Georgia. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Yeah, he's, Barry Scott is going to be with us live in Jasper, Georgia. Maybe the whole group's going to be there. Uh, he, he said he did, he's working on it. Yeah, he didn't have a definite answer on that, but uh, he is working, he's on, working it. on it. It's hard to get boys up that early in the morning. Well, it's hard to give up. They play in Gatlinburg, but I think they were going to be off on Thursday. That will be so cool because Barry Scott will be in the house with us live Thursday from Sharp Mountain Grill. Melton Campbell is, um, it's so funny because Penny Green from the Chuckwagon Gang has been calling. We've been talking. Now she's going to be there Thursday and maybe another couple of members of the Chuckwagon Gang. It's going to be a musical day. It's going to be a great day, and you've got to bring your guitar that day. Oh, well, I will. Because we want you to sit and sing with us, too. It's going to be a day. It's going to be true chilling time. Because today, Sharp Mountain Grill had to close to put in a new air conditioning unit. Oh, uh -oh. The one they had wasn't <laughs> quite big enough, so they decided if we had a lot of people in there, it might be uncomfortable. So they're putting in new air conditioning, but they have the big patio outside with umbrellas. So if it's a cool enough morning, we'll have people hanging around outside. We'll have singing going on. It's going to be awesome. I'm so glad. How are you going to fit all that music in? You got all those people. Huh? I'm just going, hey, I'd rather listen to music than talking any day. And, I love gospel music. And my music. family, the Cornet family from Carter. Your family, the Cornet family is going to be there singing. Yeah. So it is going to be wow. a musical day. The only thing I have found that's truly wrong with this setup I've not seen a baby grand piano sitting in there for Aunt Arlene to play. We'll just have to load one up. We'll have to load one up. If anybody's yeah. got a piano they want to load up and bring to Sharp Mountain Grill. Or, or a real nice keyboard. Yeah, a nice keyboard, a nice keyboard, but we do need that for her. And Barry loves to play well, the keyboard. Yeah. Well, yeah, all those yeah. all those musicians and singers, somebody's going to want to play something. We need a keyboard, so yeah. that's something we might have to work Barry's on. Barry's got a nice keyboard. I, I, I forget the word to him to bring you to know. He, uh -huh. He's got a new one. That would be good because because it is going to be so cool to have the music and the hanging out and the chilling in Jasper, our hometown. So. I'm looking forward to having Penny and them sing something too from the Chuck Wagon. Game. Oh yeah, one of my favorite groups. Yeah, yeah, they are awesome. What is that? The sun is sinking low. Yeah, that's that's one of their favorites, and I uh -huh. like the way they do "I'll Fly Away" too. Uh huh. That's right. Well, I I was so proud of Barry Saturday, and I just I know folks were happy I, to I see was him too. there. Yeah. And, and and really and truly, um, he, he signed a lot of autographs. He did a lot of promotion. 
And it was time that he did this for himself because he stepped out on faith by going out on his own. I bet he don't have time to go to the gym anymore, does he? <laughs> oh, he still goes to the gym. That boy ain't going to miss the hey, gym. He'll get that in some way. <laughs> <laughs> he is not going to miss the gym. Now, out of the songs that he wrote, some of them like, Oh, What a Day, they got to hear that this morning. And in God's time, they got to hear that one. Uh, Glorified Body, did he write that one? No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't um, think he wrote that. No. I'm trying to see the other one that I had not heard. Let's see. When the Eagle Flies. He wrote now, that. that was on Heart of the Home last year, and that was one of our most requested shows. Now, there are people doing Barry's autographs. And I, I, they, this lady, we promised her, we gave her our website and promised her that she would see herself up today. She was from Loganville, I believe. Logan. But people came from everywhere to hear him. And Where's Loganville? Him. Where is remember, Loganville? That's the old, that's the old uh, sorry. <laughs> I've been that's there, but I don't know where it's at. <laughs> remember the Maxi Price commercials? Yeah, somewhere. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Speaking of commercials, now we're going to go to the community calendar in just a minute, but I've got to share something with y'all. Today, the community calendar is brought to you by the Blue Star Sh Supermarket in Jasper, where they have the best prices in town. Well, let me tell you something. In 1959, on July 2nd, uh, this is so funny that all these papers pertain to the time of year we are now. The Blue Star Supermarket had lard. You could get four pounds of lard for 39 cents. Now, this was only the uh, 4th of July special. You could get a dozen lemons for 25 cents. This store has been around a long time nearly as long as I've been around. You could get, uh, man, it is amazing. Thin slice six ounces of cheese for 29 cents. This is at the Blue Star Supermarket, and look at their phone number, Bill, 4452. Mm, yeah. What a hoot, what a <laughs> hoot. This was in 1959, and do you see that in the middle? It says, we deliver. You pick up the phone and ask uh, Sarah, the operator, I need 4452, please. That's right, and and we deliver. They used to deliver our groceries. I love that. You I know, love I can that. Beat that. I can beat that lard price even today. You can? I got four pounds of lard right here. I give you for free. <laughs> free. You are so funny. We're going to go to the community calendar. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more to Floyd and let you hear a little bit more of Barry's music because this is a CD that's available right now. We're going to tell you where you can get them. And um, we want you to be able to know that Barry, it's available. It's, you know, we've waited a year and a half on this CD, Dad Government. We and, thought he'd never get it done. And you never got a contest winner on your We did not either. get a contest winner. So we're also going to come back and we're going to give you another question so you can win this CD. And I'm going to tell you, shame, shame, shame on you people who love the McCamish. You didn't know the answer to this question. But we're going to go to the community calendar. And once again, it is brought to you today by the Blue Star Supermarket. Good folks, friendly faces, always waiting to serve you. I'm told I'll live for a My soul will fly over Chile, Jordan, over Jordan On wings of love I'll fly away Not a moment to lose, Not a moment to lose. There's, There's nothing, nothing to do but make up your mind Take a moment and choose, choose. God's love divine From the moment you say Wherever I go, I'm glad to say My soul will fly over Chile, Jordan, over Jordan On wings of love, I'll fly away Not a moment to lose, Not a moment to lose. There's, there's nothing to do but make up your mind Take a moment and choose, a moment and choose. God's love divine. divine From the moment you say, From the moment you say God's how happy you'll shout, be how happy you'll be Take a moment and live, take a moment and live eternal
the Savior will come for me someday. My soul will fly over Chile, Jordan, over Jordan. On wings of love, I'll fly away. Not a moment to lose. Not a moment to lose. There's nothing to do but make a dear mind. Take a moment and choose. Take a moment and choose God's love divine. From the moment you're saved, how happy you'll be. Take a moment and leave. Take a moment and live eternally. Oh, I don't know about y'all, but I am loving this Barry Scott concert. This is so cool. I love it. You know, if I'd have known this, I could have just gotten the CDs and not had to sit out in the hot sun Saturday, except I did sit in the shade, and it was wonderful. Now, I'm going to make the contest easier for you. we got to give away this Barry Scott CD. I'm going to go ahead and rat y'all out and tell you that this is Roger Fortner from the McCameys, and I'm really surprised that y'all didn't know that. And this is Troy Burns, and goodness gracious sakes alive, you got to know that. Now, next question. This man in the center, Melton Campbell, the gorgeous one, replaced him with the inspirations when they went to Warner Robins, Georgia. Melton Campbell is now that singer, baritone. He is up for baritone of the year this year. Please call and tell us at 866-939-TODAY. Who is the singer? Eddie Dietz. You got it. Eddie Dietz. Who knew that? Debbie Holbrooks. Well, congratulations. She gets a Barry Scott CD. Debbie watches a lot, doesn't she? I'm glad she knew that because I'm thinking... Honey, Roger Fortner, unlike many of us, have not changed at all. So Debbie, if you keep on winning, you're gonna have a whole collection of stuff. I tell <laughs> That's you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, speaking of collections, um, do you have a large music collection of old stuff? Well, I have some, but I don't have a large collection though. No. How long have you been singing and playing? Oh. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna get Floyd to tell his age in a yeah, minute. Yeah, <laughs> I went back. I mean, I started out real young. I, I, my daddy bought me my first guitar when I was six years old. I remember we lived over in Whitfield County uh -huh. and, and, and near, between Dalton and Chatsworth. And um, then it all, I all started from that. And, and um, But oh, me and Audrey and my wife, you know, we sung together for quite a while, a long time before any, any of the kids was, was born. Brenda was the first child. And, been Brenda and then Barry and then Melissa and and so they all were involved in singing. I bought Barry his first bass guitar when he was six years old, mm -hmm. and boy, he learned that thing just right away, you know. And then he he got in, interested in playing the piano and he he took music while I'm playing the piano and the rest of it he just actually learned on his own, you know. And so he so Barry he played the piano, the bass, and and uh, guitar. And, Used to play the banjo, but I think he quit that. Either. But we sung all of our lives, uh, or I have, you know. And then the kids got old enough when when they when they started singing, well, they all started singing. And uh, Brenda, Brenda plays; um, she's our oldest daughter. She plays the piano, she uh, and the bass. Melissa, she played in the school band. She played uh, clarinet, and, mm -hmm. and that's about the only instrument that she played. But uh, she's she's a good singer. Melissa is. And, and Brenda and Barry, so we was all sung together as a family there and traveled around for I don't know how many years, you know. And, and what if a Scott child had been born and couldn't sing? <gasps> <laughs> My goodness gracious sakes alive. I, what bet you, would you? I bet you even have a sewing machine that's a singer, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> we sure do. It don't operate, oh, it don't Lord, think we got one. Oh, Lord, get a shovel because Bill is full of it today. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember the old days when your dad used to turn on TV and watch her? It was pretty neat, wasn't Shut it? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to whoop you when we get off the air today. You're whooped. <laughs> it's Monday. i got to lighten up a little bit. You yeah. are lightening up, yeah. Now, Floyd, um, when you and Audrey quit singing and the kids carried it on, Brenda was with a group. What was the name of her group? Um, Something well, Harmony? She still... 
No, well, she, they got a group now called the Interseeds. That's the one that I saw on ETC not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, they. Yeah, yeah and that was down at the Tate Gym. Yeah, they're still singing. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Mary Kent, who else? Mary Kent and, and uh, Paula, Paula Brock. And they've been together a long time, haven't they? Yeah, quite a while. That's your hell. Now, does Melissa just sing with y'all? Yeah, when when we we sing something along, you know, whenever we can, maybe on some homecoming days or mm -hmm. something. But uh, and, but Melissa is a choir director out there at Mountain View Baptist Church, and she. Um, she sings out there and sings at church, but of course, you, both uh, Brenda and Lester both teach at school. And they, they can't put a whole lot of time into singing into, right. to when school is going on. But and we have to say, Brenda's child, Brittany, yeah. sings yeah, she, and does a good job. She does, yeah. She's been on Heart of the Home with me a couple of times, right. and I did her a big favor. I let her come on the day the gorgeous one was there. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> now you could just see her grinning when she walked in and saw the gorgeous one. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> it was so cute. It was so so, cute. Uh, she was uh, excited. She was excited. And uh, of course, Barry's two two uh, uh, girls, Courtney and Cassie. They both sing. Cassie is singing this on this song here with him on the when the eagle flies. Uh huh. And uh, Vince Gill sang with him on two songs on here. That was the lights of home and. Uh, and then I think. Oh man, that is a great song. Yeah, and, that is a great and one song. of the other songs I think Vince sings on two songs, maybe, or he may sing on two, and or he, I know he plays one an instrument. I don't, I don't know if there's an instrumental on there or not. I've never seen this till yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you think that Cassie will someday pursue a singing career? I kind of think she will. I think she will. I'm not. I don't I know where Courtney will or not. She has that personality. I think she will be out there, out front, on stage. I think she can do it. Uh, Barry said Vince Gill sure did, sure did like her singing, you know. That's the first mm -hmm. time he'd met him when they went to Nashville. Well, mm -hmm. with kids and grandkids, if you had two of them singing pretty close to each other, like one in Jasper, one in LJ, on the same night, how would you decide which one to go see? <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be a problem. You'd have to go see them both. You'd have to split it up. Look, look Audrey, could go, Audrey could go see one, you could go, go see, see the other. other. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is, um, it is amazing what he has done in this time. And, and, and the songs he's written, some of them he'd written a few years ago. Yeah. But right. now to get the CD produced and to get it out there to people. And we will have some available um, at Appalachian Memories, actually. And I don't know. Barry's got a website. Is it Barry Scott and Second Wind? I think it's Barry Scott Online. Okay. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. I believe that's right. Or show up Thursday and you can get a CD because Barry will have some at the Thursday he live show. He will. And he'll be autographing CDs for you and you will get to hear the Barry Scott sing on Thursday. I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be a great day for Jasper. And y'all, I got some more cards now. We had somebody call in the other day because they couldn't figure out where to find cards. I'm just putting them out in different businesses everywhere. We had some here in LJ. We, um, we're just putting them out everywhere. So when you stop in, r &A Orchards had some. ETC here at the studio has some. And if you find one that has my autograph on it, then you will find, uh, when you show up at the Sharp Mountain Grill Thursday or if you show up at r &A Orchards, you're going to win something. We're going to be giving away food gift certificates. We're going to be doing some gift baskets. We're going to give away some CDs. We have Mayfield ice cream coupons. We have about 80. So for the first 80 people who come in, um, you're going to get some Mayfield ice cream coupons. So I, get, I get the first 40 of them. They you don't, I know you do not. <laughs> hey, when you get done with her card that has a signature on the back, take it and sell it on eBay. It's oh, do not. It's worth a not. fortune. It's worth a fortune. But we have, I've just put these out, more furniture and Jasper has some of them. Right. We've just put them out in different places. So just, you know, we, we're encouraging you to frequent your local businesses. I think uh, River Street Grill here is going to have some in just a little while. Hint, hint. So there you go. But we want you to show up on Thursday and, and you'll get to hear some good singing. You'll get uh, to win a CD. You'll get to meet and greet some of the folks that make this show possible. We're all going to be there. Um, I think Hannah Hans, the whole group, it is going to be a day to chill in downtown Jasper. You won't even have to twist Barry's arm to sing, will you? No, I don't <laughs> think so. I know, I know for a fact, if Barry Scott shows up alive and kicking, he will be singing When the Eagle Flies, because that is one of my favorite. And he sat down on my front porch the first time he ever did a show with us, and he did it in one take just like that, absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. And he has a God-given talent that, thank goodness, he shares. Sure now, Barry's CD is called In God's Time, and they will be available Thursday. So, y'all, and we're going to have another contest. Bill, what could I ask? 
it would be hard enough that we know they're thinking. Hmm, let's see. What could we ask well, you know, about Barry Scott? Who did he used to play with? Uh, we asked that last week. Oh, you did? Okay. Well, let me, let me ask you another one. I also went to see another group on Saturday, and I told y'all, he's also from Ella J, and he has a great group, and we have some pictures of him that we're going to share with you now. And if you can tell me the name of the other group that is led by another local young man who used to sing with Barry Scott. He's been on this show. You, he has been on this show, his whole group. And, honey, if I won the lottery, I would buy his lead singer and haul him around with me. <laughs> that boy, I, I watched him Saturday. I stood at the stage mesmerized. So, if you know the group of the other, the other local group, if you know the name, then you will win this Barry Scott CD. And if you don't know the name, pack and leave Gilmer County today. You ought to know his name. <laughs> you ought to know his name. Call 866-939-2329. And you will win this wonderful Barry Scott CD in God's time. Now, somebody better know the answer to that question. Local boy, Bluegrass, done good. He has really done good. And the name of his group has something to do with something I collect. And it's not mountains, and that's the odds I'm going to tell you. <laughs> that's a good clue. That's a good clue. That's a good clue. <laughs> Did you have razor soup? Yeah, I had razor soup. I sure did. Oh, Lord have mercy. I take that as a compliment, you know. I know. I you're do. doing really good. Really? Unlike one of my co-hosts who's about sleepy on the day he's here. We're going to have to wake Matt up. He's been kind of tired lately. Now, do we have a winner yet? Catherine McPherson has just won the last Barry Scott CD for today. But what was the answer? guess what? What was the answer? Mountain Heart, that's right. Mountain Heart with Barry Abernathy. Barry and I'm Abernathy. telling you, y'all watch out. I don't play the lottery much, but if I were to win the lottery, I would buy that young man and I'd just haul him around in the front seat <laughs> now, and let him sing. He's the young man that played the piano real good, oh, too. Oh, yeah. oh. Kind of jazzy style. Oh, yeah. my goodness. He's pretty good. I watched him standing up there at the stage Saturday, and I, I, there he is. Now, honey, whoo, I wish I had the money to buy that boy because he can sing Anything. Now, wait a minute. Are you wanting to buy him because he can play or is he good looking? Yeah, no, because he can sing. Okay. That, he, is, he has the most incredible talent. He can do anything. I know you're And a, he's, what, 23 years old? I don't know, but you're a sucker for good looking Honey, men. Honey, I got grandkids that old. <laughs> <laughs> you probably got socks that old, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> but see him. I mean, that boy is talented, talented, talented. Is his name Jason? I can't remember. But I, yeah, Jason. Josh. Josh. Oh, that yeah. one's Josh. Yeah. That one is. But man, he is he is one fine singer and one fine musician. Good musician. So I enjoyed his, awesome. his piano playing. He is awesome. Well, Floyd, thank you for being here today. Well, thank and, you and for I will inviting see you, me, Sherry. You will, you will be there Thursday. Yes, ma'am. You will happens. be there, and you bring your guitar because we I'll might bring it put along. a little Floyd Scott up there singing too. I'll so bring it along. Bring your guitar. We'll, we'll, we'll hang around after the show and oh, sing. Oh, that Bill too. Bard, if he wants to sing, I'll yeah, sing with yeah, you. Yeah, he sure can will. sing with you. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, boy, he's a wonderful singer. And folks, pay attention. Go to Barry's website, barryscottonline.com, mm -hmm. and you can find out about the new CDs, and you can look at his tour schedule because if he's close by, he is worth the trip. He's worth the trip. And we're going to go to the weather, and when we come back, we're going to talk Georgia Marble, Pickens County. I put a call out, and guess what? I got a bunch of cool stuff coming in from Georgia Marble Company, so hang around. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to North Georgia Now Today. Now, somebody called in and said you had what for breakfast? They said I had razor soup. Because you breakfast. were sharp today. You are sharp. Just take it See, as a compliment. See, and I like when you're that way because it makes my job more fun. Well, it's better to be that way than dull and drab and boring that's and right. that's depressing right. and all that's that. That's right. So. Y'all lighten up and have a good time because hey, Lord. You know, gas prices are bad. Economy's bad, but who cares? Who I mean, cares? We're just having a good time. I'm still time. alive. That's right. If, if my name wasn't up at Kegel today, it's a good day. <laughs> that's right. I look for mine every time I ride by yep. there. Now, every time I have something I need, somebody comes through. And I got a call from this young man Thursday night, and he said, Hey, have Daddy's we, got some stuff for you. So have we met him before? We've met Donovan Jones before. And, oh, yeah, and I remember that. <clears throat> Donovan is kind of the, he's my guy to go to when I need technology done. You can do, you've done me some DVDs with music and pictures. Mm -hmm. And I asked for 4th of July pictures, and you have come up with some phenomenal pictures and we're going to talk Georgia Marble, but let me tell you one of the pictures I thought was so cool. And, and folks here will remember <clears throat> Dixie Jones. You're not old enough to remember her, but honey, I am. Dixie Jones is crowned Miss Pickens County. And this was many, many, many years ago. But we want y'all to come up with pictures like this where we can share your stories. And one of the things we asked about was... Fourth of July celebrations. Now, I moved to Jasper in 70, but the year before I came, this is a photo of downtown Jasper, and it says record crowds attend the next year. This is 69. Now, the next year, we have record crowds attending, record-breaking attendance. I want y'all to look at all these people. Who'd have thunk we'd have had that many people? Now, let me ask you, you see that man down at the bottom of the page, y'all? I wonder if anybody will recognize that man. He was a senator from Georgia. He was a senator from Georgia. There he is. His last name start with an L? His last name, no. No, it starts with a T. Oh, okay. It starts with a T. But if anybody can call me and tell me, the picture, that senator, I'm gonna give you one of these autographed cards. I didn't know Mr. So. T I didn't know Mr. T was a senator. <laughs> oh, goodness, that man's been all over the place. So you can show up at Sharp Mountain Grill. I'm gonna sign one of these and leave it at the front desk. If you can tell me who the senator was, starts with a T. I think his family was famous for country ham. He looks a little different. Then. And he's down from uh, around Hampton, Georgia. But I'll guarantee you, in the 60s and 70s, there's somebody around. Can we zoom in on that picture? Right? I really don't want him to see his name, but I really want him to see his face. He was a senator in 69. And <clears throat> I think the last few years of his life were, yes, you got it. Tell me, choose that winner. Shirley, Shirley Durham. Durham. I'm going to put her name on this card. Herman Talmadge. And she can come to Sharp Mountain Grill on set on Thursday, and she will get, we're going to be giving away all kinds of goodies. So don't know what she'll get that day, but we're going to give away all kinds of things. And one of the things we're going to give away is just good music, because your family is going to be there. Donovan's going to bring his keyboard, because we said we needed a keyboard. Well, he stepped up to the plate, and he's bringing his keyboard. So... We'll have some good music from Barry Scott. It's going to be a fun, fun day. Now, Donovan, show me that book that your dad got out last night. <clears throat> and his daddy said, I can't let you have this book, but he would trust his child with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is The Romance of Georgia Marble. And this book is in absolutely mint condition. And it has the history of Georgia Marble. Let me show you that. Was it 1920? It's right there on the front page. Front page, 1929. Compliments of the Boys High PTA, NEA Convention, Atlanta, 1929. Now, this is something that um, probably not many people have one in this condition. I'd say so, yeah. This is amazing. Look at that beautiful handwriting, 1929. And we're going to share the romance. Look at that. What is that? It's a Taj Mahal. And what, what, what is the reference that's over, to this? That's over in Emerson, Georgia. Duh. <laughs> 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 what, 
Why do you think they chose to use that? Because they they marveled something here in Tate around that? What do yeah, you think? I, I think they put some marble on there. The Taj Mahal in India, the proud passion of an emperor's love into living stone, the most beautiful structure in all the world, the exterior white marble said to come from India so closely resembles the marble from Georgia that it is impossible to tell them apart. So, and this is not copyright 1927, The Romance of Georgia Marble. And this is a scene in 1888 from, Mar from the Marble. This is amazing to me that people even had a camera that would do the kind of quality of work this has done. You know, you could actually lie about that. So, you know, that Taj Mahal over there in Emerson, Georgia was built with Georgia marble. They'd never know uh -huh, the difference. Uh huh. That's right. They'd never know the difference. Well, this book is in absolutely mint condition. Donovan, where'd your dad find this book? eBay. 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 See, I told you it was good for something. That's right. That's right. Now, I have a picture here of the mine, and we have another picture of the mine that we are going to give away. And it is something, if you love George Marble and you love the history, we have an actual beautiful, beautiful picture that Keith Jones gave me last night, and we are going to give this away. And I really think we should ask a question about Georgia Marble. Huh, what would be a good one? What town is the Marble School located in? That's a good question. That's a good question. And we're going to give away this picture, and, and I think Jasper Drugstore has a frame that it will fit in perfectly. This is amazing because this is part of our area history that is gone. You know, the things are not like they once were. And in the near future, you're going to meet a man who carved Georgia marble for 16 years. That's a big old hole. There's a bulldozer down there. Uh huh. That. Uh huh. Isn't that amazing? But this is a beautiful picture. It is Tate, Georgia. Who's the winner? Earl Holbrooks. Holbrook. Well, there's a bunch of Holbrooks. Yeah, cool. Man. That is Tate, Georgia. And um, Tate, Georgia is one of those places, it literally was put on the map because Colonel Sam Tate came here, the Georgia Marble Company employed people for over 100 years. And Donovan, do you have a commemorative, um, the pink marble and the oh, other yeah. marble, are those the 100 that's, year uh, anniversary? That's the 100th and this is the 75. Okay, this is to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Georgia Marble and it's pink marble, which is at, always my favorite. You don't like pink, do you? Oh, I love pink. You could tell Friday I love pink. Friday was my favorite day. Love pink. And then this is the 75th anniversary. For 100 years, many of our families worked. My mom worked there. Uh, many of our families worked at Georgia Marble. And it was one of those things. There was the company store, the company houses. Now, this is so cool. The Tate baseball team, semi-pro champions of the state of Georgia. Can we get a close-up of this? Because I'll guarantee you... This is a small ball team that won state in Georgia. This, this book is phenomenal. It, it is just in mint, mint condition. And uh, Keith was very, very lucky. He didn't tell me what he paid for it, but I want, I want y'all to see the gem because not many people know how old the gem is. And the, the restoration and the history and saving the gem was so important to so many. We weren't sure of the age of the gym, but this book was published in 27, so that gives you an idea about that. Oh, I've sang in that gym a few times, and I can tell you, it's got some age on it's it. It's got some age on it, and it's got yeah. some old bathrooms you have to stand in line to <laughs> That's get funny. To. That is not funny when that you're a woman funny. having to go. <laughs> it is not funny That's at funny. all. <laughs> it's very funny. Oh, uh, now I want to show you some of the places. This is McKinley Memorial Building in Niles, Ohio. This was built from Georgia Marble. So we all associate Washington with Georgia Marble, and we know that much of Washington, D.C. is Georgia Marble, but this is a huge conglomerate in Ohio that is also Georgia Marble. And that's, I have that's, to say, where, that's where Yankees live, up in yeah. Ohio. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I have to say good day to my little buddy Ralph Ray, who is down there loading a load of Georgia Marble. Honey, you know where he's taking it? Washington, D.C. Manhattan. Ooh. Manhattan. Can you imagine driving a load of Georgia marble to Manhattan? Now, it is amazing the structures that are totally Georgia marble. It's amazing to me when I, I do a lot of work down in Nelson in Ballgram, but there's an area in Nelson right behind the Georgia marble place I do work for, and there's a just a big scrap heap of marble laying there. It's amazing uh -huh. how much they had to throw away. Oh, yeah. Now, here, this is probably one of the most famous 
pieces of Georgia marble anywhere. What is that, Donovan? The Lincoln Memorial? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? There. That's massive. Uh -huh. Massive. Uh -huh. Now tell me the height Huge. of that, Bill, because I, we can't imagine. I can't. I don't know the exact height, but I'm I'm six foot two. I'm looking up, looking at it. It's really? probably 35, 40, 50 feet tall at least. Now see, to me, that just looks like a little dude sitting in a chair. No. <laughs> Uh, it's huge. <laughs> that huge. is not a little dude sitting in a chair. <laughs> hey, when you go in there, too, uh, all you actually see when you see those pictures is him sitting there. But when you go in there, uh -huh. you go in, you look up, and it's another about 100 feet up on walls of marble with etchings in it. Wow. And columns wow. and nine yards. Now, Donovan, this is a, what would you call this, a ledger from 1932, the Georgia Marble Company, Tate, Georgia. Where did this come from? eBay. eBay. Now, isn't that something? Who would have thought... <laughs> that we could get on eBay and find things that came from this area. There was a guy on there yesterday uh, auctioning off his life. Did you hear about that? For a guy no. from Australia. He, he was. No. Yeah. Well, let's see. I, I might why. get $12 for mine. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't know what the final bid was. but uh, This little book has, uh, this is funny because I would not have thought of the metric system being in here in 1932. Because we all think of when we converted to metric. Um, as years, you know, many years later. This has the interest table on um, what interest you would charge on a loan. It has, um, and then it was 6% interest. This is January 1932. Yes, Bill, I wasn't born then. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I was getting around to it, though. <laughs> Although, had I have been born in January of 1932, I'd have been born on a Wednesday. <laughs> No, Bill, I was not born in 1932. Now, we have some postcards, and, and this is so funny because how many people have gone to Long Swamp Church for revival? That's been this there a long is, time. This is a one-cent stamp, 1908. Dear friend, I received your lovely postal and was pleased to hear from you. This is a very lonesome place. All we can do is see the mountains respectfully yours now would you describe marble hill as a very lonesome place 1908 i don't know long swamp who would have thought of taking a picture of long swamp creek in tate georgia and making it a postcard and this is so funny this went to massachusetts so now look at this for one penny it went to massachusetts if you notice, there's no zip code. There's no zip code. There's no zip code. Isn't that something? Mm. And today, sometimes you get the mail there and sometimes you don't. This is a Georgia marble plant in Tate, Georgia. Now this is 1939. And this says, uh, Monday, April, we leave here sometime this afternoon. Uh, I can't read the rest of his writing, but his name was Ben and this went to New York. Who to thunk it? Who to thunk people from this area even knew people that far away then? <laughs> but see how big that was and how many buildings? It just looks massive. And this was when Tate was a dirt road. Well, they must have saw you on TV back then advertising. Tate. Yeah, they did. I'm going to whoop you. <laughs> now, let me tell you something about Tate, Georgia. This is Sam Tate's residence. And this is in. 1940. This went to West Virginia, and this is, Dear Molly, we really appreciate the folder, so many pretty places. This is a view of Colonel Sam Tate's home, a different view from the one you got, get from the highway. Hope you are well. So if you pass by Tate, Georgia today, this is not the view you would get, but if you turn in the side driveway, this would have been the entry in 1940. Pretty amazing. You know, that's pretty massive. That's mm -hmm. pretty expensive, even for 1940. Colonel Sam was doing all right for himself. He was me. not doing bad. No, <laughs> he was not doing very bad. Now, this is an aerial view, and who'd have thought about taking a plane up over there? Plant and storage yards in Tate, Georgia, and this one doesn't have a year, but it is so massive. And today, when you go by there, there isn't the presence that there was then. No. Look at that. And this is the question that I just, um, we've asked this before. Where's the Marble School? Well, guess what? Tate High School. And this one, this card was mailed to Griffin, Georgia, and it still was a penny to mail. What's the postcard? 
today? 42? Not 40, a postcard. Oh, postcard, I'm talking about a stamp. 23, 23 20. cents. So we've gone up quite a It'll bit. It'll be a dollar before the year's over. I'm this sure. is the Marvel School that is still standing in Tate, Georgia. And my mom lived right there on top of the hill by the Tate Schoolhouse. Not so. another one like it in America. No. Now, your daddy is kind of a, <clears throat> we're not going to call him a genius because we're not going to give him the big hand, but he's pretty smart, isn't he? Yeah. And he loves history. And your granddaddy p played on a ball team that your dad also found some pictures of. Were they in a progress? Yeah. So your daddy's done a lot of research and he's found a lot of things. And I want to encourage other people to do the same thing that your dad has done. Because basically, a lot of this information, and, and like newspapers, he rounded up some great papers. But we noticed last night, <clears throat> if you look at this Pickens County Progress, it is six inches larger then than it was now. The Progress cut down their size. And I don't know why. Well, I don't know. Ice cream people have done the same thing. I went and bought a carton of ice cream last night. Oh, I know night, it. And it was 1.5 quarts. Exactly, exactly. I can eat that in three now, scoops. Now listen to this, y'all. A new garment plant is coming to Jasper. And, and that is something. A garment plant came to Jasper, and it stayed for many, many years, the Lee Company. Mm. And it left. A shoe plant came to Jasper, and it stayed for many, many years, and it left. We talked about the Jasper Theater the other night, and we called it the Main Street Theater. It was Jasper Theater when Miss Sarah Maddox owned it, but when um, Jackie Geis bought it, she changed the name to Main Street Theater. It was the Jasper Theater. Today, Donovan, if you took a date to the movie this weekend, what would it cost you? $10 a person. $10 a person, and that's if you don't buy our popcorn or a Coke. Yeah. Okay, son, if you'd have been around in uh, 1959, you could have gone to a movie for, but listen to this. Your choice, your admission is 15 cents or 35 cents. What do you think the difference would have been? Uh, where you got to sit. Where you got to sit. 15 cents or 35 cents. So a little bit mm, and interesting. Got, and back then you got to watch the, the monster that ate New York. That mm -hmm. was the movie. Now, now listen to this. This is an obituary from 1959. Robert Truman Ray died at his home Tuesday after a lengthy illness. Mr. Ray worked in the Whitestone Mines at Whitestone. Survivors include his wife and seven stepsons. That was a good man. You know, we were talking about that the other day. Um, being a young widow, Aunt Bessie was a young widow who married somebody. She had about seven kids. That takes a heck of a man to take on seven kids, doesn't it? But this is, uh, the no obituaries comment. were a lot more lengthy than they are today. And, and they tell more details. And uh, it, it is just that the paper has evolved, it's changed. Now listen to this, in today's paper we won't see hospital reports. But in this, this is so funny, it says Roper Hospital, born to Mr. and Mrs. Hoyt Abercrombie, a girl, on June the 23rd. Mr. Joe Godfrey was admitted after an accident. See, those things aren't in the paper now. Is it because of that old... Your right to privacy. I don't like that well, thing. I guess you know, I... I don't want no right to privacy. If it happens, I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> Born to Mr. and Mrs. Carl Penley, a girl. Mr. Sherman Barnes, Mr. Sherman Barnes had an operation. See, you know what's going on. The paper just has to tell you, or will yeah. tell you. So. How often does that come out? Once a week? This is funny. Yes, it says those admitted for treatment were. Can you imagine the hospital releasing what they do today to us? No, it ain't going to happen. No, this is so funny. They had every name here listed of who was in the hospital. That is a hoot. <laughs> that is a hoot. And the marriage announcements were like this big. I like Miss Hannah's, which is a big, nice picture. So. Did they have divorce announcements too? They did not, but they did have a legal announcement. And here's a cool one, the Nelson Ball Ground Telephone Company. Well, guess who owns that today? It's Now ETC's taking over Ball Ground, thank goodness. Home news, oh, this is funny. They went to visit a, a relative at Emory Hospital that was seriously <laughs> ill. Now, is, isn't that cool? Remember that other, we had that other old paper in here from uh -huh. the 20s, I think it was talking about so-and-so from Atlanta to visit their relatives. Oh, now I've got to read this. Y'all will love this. 
Miss Mimi Jo Hill, who is now Mimi Jo Butler. Miss Mimi Jo Hill and Robert Jones and Robert Eubanks, all graduates of Young Harris, attended a house party there last weekend. Ooh. Oh, that might have been wild. <laughs> Mimi Jo, you'll have to tell us about that. But the party. secret's out now. That is so funny. Mr. Herschel O'Brien had guests last weekend. His niece from Buford, Georgia came. This is a hoot. <laughs> You're just now learning all Everything that? made the news. Everything made and, the news. And again, what year is this? 1959. 59. When I was eight years old. Not 30, like you think. I didn't say it. This is a hoot. I love this. Now, Donovan, do you collect stuff like your dad does? No, no. not really. Do you sit back and look at Daddy and think, now your Daddy did tell me last night, he's funny because he found another one of these books, but he wouldn't pay the price. Yeah. He said he's kind of budget conscious. When he's bidding on eBay, he watches his prices. And, and I will say, he said that he could have gotten another postcard, but it went to, what was it, $12? Yeah. And he wouldn't pay that for it. So Good for this, him. Yeah, this is a hoot. And I love the grocery, the um, ads in the grocery store. That is so funny. And, and the movie playing in Jasper that day on July the 3rd was Motorcycle Gang, an American international company. I have never seen Motorcycle Gang. It's probably a James Dean film. Well, I was about to ask that. But uh, now listen to this. This is a hoot. Do y'all remember when Cagle Funeral Home and, and Chapman Funeral Home were the only ambu ambulance service we had? I heard about this it. This is Cagle's ad. It's way Instant my time. oxygen equipped. Ambulance service, guess what the next statement is? Lady attendant can furnish complete courteous funeral service. That is a hoot. You used to pay $50 to use the ambulance service for your, or use the funeral home for your ambulance service. Yeah. Today, it's all federal regulated and things change. Now, do you remember the Marble Valley grocery store? It wasn't no. open when you came. And here's a store that I don't remember, Cagle's store. Their phone number was 3123. If I were guessing, and if there's anybody out there who remembers this, please call and tell me about it. Kegel store, me knowing what I know about Kegel Town, I would say this grocery store was located off of 108. Probably so. But if you remember Kegel's grocery store, please call me and I will tell you, Lord have mercy, you could have bought, bought mayonnaise for 29 cents, but it was not my brand. And I'm sure it was a great big old jar, too. No, and it wasn't my brand. And you know what brand of mayonnaise yes, I, I use. Yes, I do. It looks like your shirt. It does. Well, it's blue. The name <laughs> it's play. blue. It's blue. But if you remember Cagle's store, I want you to call and tell me about it. Let's see if we can do some research on that. There are so many cool places that don't exist anymore. They don't exist anymore. Well, I'll tell you something that does exist. It's time for the news. The news always exists, 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Here we go, Miss Hannah. Thanks, Sherry. Hans Ruford joins us now with this week's Hans Cooks the World. Today, Hans is cooking up something that may not be a staple in your pantry, but is sure to be tasty. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Hans Cooks the World on North Georgia Now. I'm going to put together a little bit of a stuffed date. And uh, dates are something that a lot of folks around here aren't too familiar with unless they're used in baking, but uh, this is a whole date and it has a pit inside there. And uh, dates taste a lot like honey. They're almost like a, a giant raisin, but they have more of a, a little bit sort of a sticky honey kind of taste to them. And they go really well, obviously, in sweet dishes, but also because of that sort of sweetness, they go well with, with savory dishes as well. So we're going to put together a, a blue cheese stuffed date, which makes a nice accompaniment to a salad, or uh, even if you throw them in the oven, actually, they would do good on their own as sort of an appetizer. So the dates have a, a pit inside them. So I'm just going to make a little slit here and then actually with a knife kind of come in and dig out that pit. It just looks like a little, uh, almost like a pecan, kind of a little hard seed. You can't really do anything with that. So we're going to toss those. And now I'm going to put together the, the actual stuffing for it. And I've got some pretty strong blue cheese. And uh, I went for a more of a sharp blue cheese so that it can, you get the sharpness that goes with the sweetness. So I'm using a, a blue cheese that's a little more, um, Again, strong that you might just eat on a cracker, but it makes great for a stuffing. And then equal parts of blue cheese and then also some cream cheese. And I've had these sitting out for about an hour, so they're room temperature and they're soft. And it's a little easier to work them there. So I'm going to put in some salt, just a little bit, and a little bit of pepper. And you can add anything you want to this. You want to put some paprika if you want to make it kind of a, a smokier or you give it a little red tint to it as well. Um, you could throw in, uh, we could use truffle salt instead and 
I'm going to actually use a little bit of uh, truffle oil. And this stuff's fairly expensive, but it, has, it packs a punch. I'm just going to put a little bit in there, and that's going to kind of help loosen the whole thing up. And we're going to go ahead and turn on our machine here and then raise the bowl. And that's just going to mash together. And uh, a couple ways you can stuff this, you could actually take this stuffing out and put it into a little bit of a, a plastic bag and cut the tip off and, and then use it almost like a pastry bag. You can squeeze it into the dates. But I'm not going to be quite that neat. I'm just going to take a little bit and actually just sort of shove it into there. And again, this is going to be, these are great little appetizers on their own. Or you could even take a strip of bacon and wrap a piece of bacon around that and bake them in the oven until the bacon is a little bit crunchy. And then you have the, the stuffing that actually sort of oozes out. Uh, it's a, just a wonderful, versatile thing to do. And again, it's something a little, little unexpected. It's not something you see every day. And they're, they're wonderful. The rest of the world eats dates pretty much like candy. But in our area, again, we just think of them as something that you bake with. So I'm going to put a little bit of cracked pepper in here. All right. So again, just very, very simple kind of stuffing here. Just a, just a really a cut down blue cheese is all it is. So it takes the, uh, that sort of punch of blue cheese, gets thinned down a little bit with the cream cheese, which has a nice neutral flavor. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of this in each one. And again, we've already have our little opening here. So I'm just gonna kind of stuff, pack as much as you can into, uh, into each of those. And on a, if you had a, a nice salad, even with a, a sort of a bitter green, like a radicchio or an arugula, um, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a sweet bite to complement the bitterness of the greens. And I think, you know, bitter is a taste that we in the States don't really appreciate. I mean, I'm not talking like, you know, spit it out kind of bitter. I'm talking about something that has a, a little bit of an edge to it. And uh, if you really learn to appreciate that flavor and then complement it or pair it with something that's a little sweet and tangy, uh, it's just a nice, it adds to your palate. You know, you actually, I think eating is a, is a learning experience. Or anytime you can kind of sneak a new flavor or a new taste into it, it really just opens up your your whole culinary world, I think. It's just an exciting thing. Anytime I'm exposed to something new, um, it's just an exciting little epiphany. So there's our little stuffed dates. Again, they're a great little snack just like this. Um, you could even roll them in some crushed almonds, get a little crunch to them as well. Um, just a very versatile thing and something you ought, you ought to try. If you're not familiar with dates, uh, pick them up and give them a try. Thanks, Hans. In today's financial report, Calvin Rowland addresses several commonly believe financial myths. This week's he covers topics from inflation to Social Security. I'm amazed at how many outright myths that people believe about money. Among those are, if I can just make more money, I'll be rich. The facts are, the secret to being rich is spending less than you make. I have known many people over my career who have had very modest incomes and yet in retirement have become extremely wealthy. In fact, I ran an illustration not long ago using just an average kind of a growth income mutual fund. Ran it for a young man who had about 45 years left to retirement. And interestingly, for somebody with that long a time frame, putting only $3 a day into this particular mutual fund, and again, it wasn't anything special, grew to be almost $2 million in 46 years. So it doesn't take a lot of money to accumulate money if you start early enough and do it regularly. Another myth that a lot of people have is, well, I'll depend on Social Security for my retirement. The facts are that when Social Security was instituted back in the 1930s, the way they settled on age 65 as normal retirement age is that the average life expectancy was age 62. Nobody was there, or everybody was never intended to collect. Today, the average life expectancy is around 77. Another problem is that back in those days, there were 45 people working for every one person that was drawing Social Security. Today that number is three people working for every one person and within the next 20 years or so it'll be two people working for every one person drawing Social Security. Folks, the math doesn't match up. That's a place where you need to begin to take care of yourself. Another serious misunderstanding is that well the Federal Reserve for years has had inflation under control. We all remember back in the late 70s and early 80s when inflation was running 12 to 15 percent a year. That meant the price of something doubled every six years at a 12 percent inflation rate. Granted, today the rate is only about 3 percent, but that still means 
that in about every 18 years or so, uh, 18 to 20 years, the prices of things are going to double and most of us are going to live at least 20 years in retirement. Probably the last myth that you need to think about and you need to address is most people say, sure, I know where my money is and what it's doing. Do you really? I'm amazed how many people I meet who have left a previous employer, have not been there for years, and they've still got some retirement money sitting in that retirement plan. They don't even know how it's invested. So if you find yourself in any one of these situations, do some careful evaluation and see if you can't find some ways to get your financial situation moved out of the myths and into the facts in North Georgia now. Thank you, Calvin, for that information. If you have a financial topic that you would like to see discussed on North Georgia Now today, you can send us an email at ngn at lj.com. And we just wanted to give you an update on Austin Brown. That was a little girl that we did a story on last week um, who has a brain tumor. Well, actually, she's doing quite well. She's back home in Jasper, uh, settled in. Uh, the surgery was successful. and uh, but. They still are asking for your thoughts and prayers for her. Now coming up this Saturday will be another auction for Austin because there are still a lot of medical expenses and that is at the Talking Rock Auction House in Talking Rock, Georgia. And also, if you would like to donate any money to Crescent Bank, Wachovia, or United Community Bank, any bank uh, branch will um, get the money to Austin and her family. But we'd just like to say that we are still thinking about Austin and her family and we continue to uh, support her and hope that she has the great success. Well, that is all the news for now. I will see you on tomorrow's show at the top of every hour. Until then, I'm Hannah Baker. Back to you, Sherry. Thanks, Hannah. You know what? This paper is a hoot. I, I may just go get me some old progresses and sit around and read. This is the best reading I've had in a long time. It says uh, for the 4th of July, and we have the 4th of July celebrations coming up in all different areas. There will be a dog calling, a cow calling, a chicken calling, a hog calling, a cracker eating, an RC drinking, a bubble gum blowing, and two dollars for the winners. Wow. Whoopity do, but this is the best one. There will be ten guineas turned loose during the day. They will each have a dollar attached to each leg. $865 total will be given away in prizes. Be sure to come and get yours. The proceeds this year will be, now this is interesting, the proceeds will be used to, this year to promote industry here in Pickens County. Well, commissioners and politicians, these guys years ago had a pretty good plan. Yeah. Let's bring some industry to Pickens <laughs> County. Donovan, when you grow up, will you have to leave Pickens County to work? Yeah. You will, you will, unless you get a job here at ETC, because there's not much technical going around in Jasper, is there? You can go work Captain D's down there, that's a good place no, to No, he's too technical for that, he's too technical for that. But, but you will probably have to leave home to work, and wouldn't it be cool if the commissioners and the politicians today stop you bickering, stop you belly aching, stop you whining, and get to work doing something for us, <clears throat> let's bring some industry back to the states. Let's bring some jobs back to the mountains. Let's do what it takes to keep us at home working. I think it's very important. And I think, you know, um, let's, let's wake up. And what is that? Wake up and smell the coffee. Let's wake up and smell the coffee. And do what it takes to make us able to stay here. Now this, we, you could have won a $2 bill if you'd have won the 100-yard dash or the three-legged race or the tire rolling race. I like the grease pole and grease pig. I've seen well, that. That's they've funny. Got at two o'clock, <clears throat> at two o'clock, the greasy pole, <laughs> the greasy pig. You ever seen them do that? The grease yes, pole? Yes, funny. yes, yes. This is a hoot. And this was <clears throat> 1959. What year did we decide the 4th of July celebration had started? 1776. No, no, no. In Jasper, Georgia. Oh, in Jasper. I'm sorry. And you know what? It says it's sponsored by the, John, the Jasper Lions Club and the Pickens County JCs. Pickens County JCs don't exist anymore. Hmm. They don't exist. But we have the, um, the Lions are still very, very involved right. in it. And they're selling chances on a truck that they will give away that day. It's that now, big blue truck down there. It's that big blue truck in front of, is it North Georgia North Bank? North Georgia Bank, yep. 
Now I want y'all to look at this because one of the people who will be with us at the show in Jasper happens to own a restaurant right here on the corner where WH Dry Goods used to be. This is now Three Sisters Restaurant. Look at how many people came to the 4th of July celebration. Good grief. Now, and that is um, WH Dry Goods. <clears throat> the building, I think, is owned by George Weaver. That's a lot of mosquito And that's bait. where Three Sisters is. But i got to show you all these photos. You won't recognize Donovan, who is down here in the corner. Nick, Donovan, and Baby Bo. Oh, ain't they cute. And, and this is the 4th of July parade. So these are the kind of pictures we're looking for, guys. And, and this one, it does show faces in the crowd, and there's a precious, precious lady sitting there in a wheelchair. I can't tell you how many hundreds of dollars of candy we have bought and thrown out in these parades. And one year we actually won first place on the parades. And um, a lot of folks have pictures. So y'all, if you've got pictures, get in touch with me because Donovan's gonna make us a CD. Now this is the year my husband ran for city council. And uh, this is the 4th of July parade. And once again, we just happen to have these pictures sitting around. So like a, he looked like a politician waving like that. He did, and he'd get up every morning and say, Sugar, what do you want me to wear today? To kiss the babies? <laughs> he did. Okay. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. Good man. But um, anyway, if you have pictures, please call us, contact us, get in touch with me here at the studio or at my office, and, and let us know. Because Donovan wants to put together something with music. Mm -hmm. and memories and there are so many memories. I remember my first fourth of July and you have to think about it. I came from Morningside. Did I've they, never seen anything like that in my life. Did they have fireworks back then? Yes, Bill, they had okay. fireworks. They had fireworks when some of the men would be drinking too much and their wives would come grab them by the ear and take them home. Yeah, yeah, you can call that fireworks. Oh, boy, that's a different kind. <laughs> They had some fireworks and some husband chasing down there because it used to be kind of wild and crazy. But there were, even back then, there were some of these rides that looked very primitive to me. So if you have pictures, please get in touch with me and, and let's get Donovan working because we want a really good presentation by next week to show. And, and to remember because Gilmer County has festivities on the 4th, Fannin County does. So any of you who have pictures from any of your 4th of July celebrations, please get in touch with me. What you think about that? Yeah, I've, I've seen that before. The bullet. Yeah, the bullet. The I've, bullet. Ridden, I've ridden yeah. the bullet before. Yeah. That'd make you sick. Yeah, Dang, and what so year was that one? Time. Let's see. Lord have mercy. This is 1967. And the first one I went to was 1969. So, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, It was. this is the one, first one I ever went to. July 4th, celebration 1969. And this, it says, Jasper phone numbers to change. Uh-oh. They did, too, Does didn't that they? mean we got those three numbers in front of it? Well, now they got nine <laughs> numbers. Yep. Isn't that something? July the 10th, 1969. And uh, I'm, I'm sure some of y'all have papers and have celebrations. And, and Dixie Jones, we didn't tell you what family. This is A.L. and Juanita Jones' daughter. And she is still not down gorgeous today. You know, every city in America has some Joneses. Yes. Just saying, and Smith's. Yes, and Martin's. Very common name. And Johnson. <laughs> very common. And, and, uh, and Donovan Jones. Donovan's not a common name, but it was named in honor of your aunt, mm -hmm. who died very young, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. Your mom's only sister. I so. thought she might have been named after that hippie singer from the 60s. No, yeah. no, no. But Good you music. love music. Good music. Uh -uh. Yeah. Now, y'all, give us some pictures and give us some information. We're going to go to some pictures of gardens oh, now. Oh, yeah, Mom. And, and mountains, I've been taking pictures of the mountain scenes, I've been taking pictures of gardens, I've been taking pictures of flowers. I have so enjoyed watching your gardens grow. And it's been a whole lot easier on me. I haven't sweat a bit. But there are some pictures here. I met a wonderful gentleman on Friday. I stopped and I just got out and I said, sir, do you mind if I take pictures of your garden? He doesn't have an average garden. He had about 8,000 head of cabbage. I think you just figured out a new way to get free food. <laughs> it's pretty good. That's what it is. Well, let me tell you what he did. And I hated, to, I hated to show my ignorance. I said, sir, what is that? He said, that's collards. Well, I'd never seen collards growing, for goodness sake. So he cut me some collards. And then Gail cooked it and made us cornbread. And it was great. But did, I'd never seen him growing. Did you get him to show you how to do potatoes, how to grow potatoes? No. You still haven't figured that out no. yet? No. Okay. But let me tell you what he's got. He has got cabbage, corn, broccoli. I can't wait to go back and see him when the broccoli's coming in. And it is kind of his hobby slash 
fun job. Bro it's not his job. Broccoli's good for you, but it stays pretty close to you if you know it what does, I mean. It does, yeah. it does, but it's also very good for you. And, and let me tell you, I just, I've been picking up men all weekend cooking. <laughs> I met a man, this is a hoot. I went to a Blue family reunion at Cade's Cove, and I met this man who gave me a plate with his email address on it, and he cooked us morel mushrooms. He is from Indiana, and he gathered these mushrooms in the woods, and we've got pictures of him cooking these, and he brought them down here, and they fried them like we would deep fry onion rings. You know, I can never figure out which mushrooms are good and which ones That's are bad. That's what I told him. That's what I told him. I said it made me very nervous because he said, oh, I'll show you how to do it. And I said, are you going to convince me what's poison and what's not? That's very nerve-wracking. Yeah, make sure your life insurance is paid exactly, up Exactly, because mushrooms. I don't know a lot about it. But we're going to go to the photos of this weekend. I did a lot of traveling, did some eating with some folks up at the family reunion. I didn't have to cook anything. I made a quart of tartar sauce, and that's all I had to do. Yeah. So this is the best family reunion I've ever been to. And it was at Cade's Cove, and I got to go all the way through there. And um, this will show the family photos and, and the fish. We cooked halibut from Alaska. We cooked crappy that Jerry caught. Yeah. And everybody who watches Heart of the Home knows Jerry's my buddy that I travel with and go places. He's just a sweet, sweet man who has killer good looking legs, but he's a great cook. And you said this was your first time eating crappy? <laughs> My first time eating crappy. Where have you been? I don't know. That's good, I had that's an idea stuff. that fish tasted fishy. The halibut did not and the crappy did not. So Adam, let's go to these photos and see if we can share. Y'all, if we can do it, y'all can too. Now this is up, this is on our way to the family reunion. And we are at the North Carolina, Tennessee state line. I didn't even know that happened. I bet your we ears were popping at that place. My ears they? were popping about as bad as they are today. Yep. <laughs> Tennessee, North Carolina state line. There's something about 5,000 feet that'll just pop the uh -huh. ears. Yeah, elevation 5,048 feet. So it's slow. We're trying to fix it. You know. Your ears popped when you came to my house? My ears did pop when I came to your house. Okay. You're right. You're right. About yeah. 2,000, 2,500 feet it'll do it uh -huh. to you. Yeah, and this one was twice as far as we were with you. But you so. know, my, my ears don't pop anymore. You get kind of used to that. The really? only way to do is if you get a cold and it kind of messes with you. Well, we are going up to Tate Mountain Estates because I got a call from Mr. Martin, the gentleman that was on the show a few weeks ago, and he invited us down to Tate Mountain Estates. I've never seen that, so I'm going to get firsthand up carry, close. Carry a camera. Carry a camera. Beautiful shots. And carry a camera that has um, plenty of batteries and an empty disc in it. Because you need, hopefully we'll see some bears. You need to go there when the leaves change. It is right. gorgeous. Gorgeous. Right. And then right. you see the, the autumn leaves reflecting off the water. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can't tell which there is water. There you go. Now there's not. my boy Jerry. There's, there's the uh, family reunion. And this is at Cade's Cove. And let me tell you, a 300 bear walked up on them the day before we, or the night before we got there. When we got there, the bear didn't come back, but we did find it late, late in the day. Well, for you folks who have never been to Cage Cove, you need to go. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous place. And you place. know what amazed me about it? They don't charge you a dime to go through right, there. Right, right. If every car, now that's Jerry Bryan the uh, crappy. If every car that went through Cade's Cove paid three dollars, the state of Tennessee would have some money coming on because there was a lot of cars well, they in got, there. They got plenty of money in Tennessee. It is a beautiful place, and it's maintained absolutely perfect. Some little place Just, called Pigeon Forge, they bring in the money up there. A little bit of money comes in there, and their sales tax is astronomical. That fish looked good. That fish was awesome. What time is lunch? <laughs> I don't know, but Jerry said they had plenty left over, so. Looks like a Baptist fish fry. Oh, man, it was so good. And I want to show you the guy who did the mushrooms, because it was I'd never seen these mushrooms before. They fry them? He fried them. He deep fried them, yeah. There's Jerry, there's niece, and we'll get to see grandbaby in a minute. We had the best day, just a great day. Now there's the gentleman with the mushrooms. He brought those down from Indiana, that's Jerry's oldest brother. And I have to tell you, the family is what they are because their mom, an awesome, awesome cook, taught their sons to cook. Now that's a mushroom frying in the grease, see that? Does It, it actually looks like a piece of fish, but mm. that's a mushroom. And there he's salting them. That's what he was showing me the method, how to cook them. And he washed them really, really well. He soaked them in water. There's Jerry and the grandbaby. Well, you know, the key to that and is... And his son Jared is sitting in the background. The key to that is let him go ahead and fry and eat it, give him 30 There's minutes. There's my boy. How sweet. Is that not precious? <laughs> that is so sweet. Yeah, give that man 30 minutes after he eats the mushrooms, and then you'll be Yeah, okay. now look at this. is Cade's Cove turkeys. And I can tell you there's some good, big, healthy turkeys up there. 
and tons of deer. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. And I said, it was, I'd never They're been big. all the way through there. They're big too, those deer. Now right. I've been all the way through there about three times because it took that long to find a bear. So. A lot of those deer let you walk pretty close to them to uh -huh. take pictures of them too. Oh yeah, we got up close and personal, yeah. You smell them too, it is, Oh, it's beautiful though. It is so incredible. And uh, this time of year, it wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold. Just absolutely gorgeous. Did you see the little church in there? We stopped at the three churches. We actually went inside the first, the little Baptist primitive one. And uh, we did, um, Ralph actually went up to the um, altar and uh, led a song. There's a group uh, in Jasper, I think at Refuge Road Baptist. They take they a trip They go up. once a year. Yeah. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. We talked about that because that's what I wanted to find. I wanted to find where they did their church service. And um, isn't that, oh, it's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness I have a good Nikon camera, so. I'm kind of learning. Now there are deer. We're finally beginning to come up on the deer. I know a particular gospel singer that takes his family bike riding in there all the time. It's uh -huh. really pretty. Wow. Well, the, the traffic was, it was backed up pretty good at times. and uh, But we counted uh, between 60 and 100 deer. I just, I kind of got tired of counting deer because I was too busy looking for a bear. It's kind of like a mountain safari. Uh-huh, you know? it was. But I couldn't believe, I mean, they when we got over to the restroom facilities and all that, I thought, well, there'll be somewhere that you pay for this. And and it was just free. It's just, um, there you go. There's the church we went in. And for you folks who don't know Primitive Baptist Church. Uh-oh. Boy, was I doing something crazy or was Ralph doing something crazy? I thought he was in the spirit there. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the spirit big that time. Is a hoot. Oh, Lord, he, he was having an out of body well, experience. Well, I can tell right? you those pews were not comfortable and you would not do a long revival there. Well, for you folks who don't know where this is at, if you go up to Townsend or Gatlinburg area, it's kind of in between there. Mm -hmm. And we literally did this. We left that morning at 9.17. Yes, I was 17 minutes late. Yes, okay, I've admitted it. <laughs> I was 17 minutes late. We left at 9.17. We got up to Berry's by 12, by 11.45, 12 o'clock. We um, listened to he and Barry Abernathy sing, and then we went on to Cade's Cove, and this is how we spent the rest of our day, and it was absolutely, it's a day trip that all of y'all can do. And if you haven't done it, or if you haven't done it in many years, um, go back and do it again, because I hadn't been there in 25 years, and I had never been all the way through there. So I think when I went, I had crying, whining kids, and we didn't <laughs> stay long. I can tell you, it's much better at my age when you don't have the crying, whining kids. <laughs> but it was phenomenal. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes, it is. And Beautiful just so there. peaceful. And I said, the only problem I had with this, they did allow, and I love Harleys. Lord have mercy, I love Harleys. But they allowed motorcycles in there, and the motorcycles kept the animals disrupted a little bit. And yeah. we happened to be near a group of bikers, so we kind of got away from them so we could hear, um, or the animals could not hear the noise. So we waited and kind of separated ourselves. But it is such a, and you can just turn your car off and sit there and it's so quiet and so peaceful, so. Well, in our area, if you don't want to drive quite that far, you can go over to Red Top Mountain in Cartersville uh, near Lake Alatoona and mm -hmm. still see deer like that. They're just everywhere. You can go up and feed them by hand mm -hmm. and stuff, so. A little closer in, but Cades Cove is a great place. It is beautiful. beautiful. Now, Donovan, you are into videography and things like that. Have you ever been into photography? Not really. Well, it's, it's interesting to mix the two, and we're going to take my pictures, and you're going to make me a DVD you gonna, with music. You're going to put it to Led Zeppelin or something? Is that yeah. What no. <laughs> What's the song we chose? Oh, for which one? Take Me Home Country Roads. Oh, yeah. For the mountain scene, we chose Take Me Home Country Roads. And for the garden scenes, we didn't get to the garden scenes today. What do you think, what kind of music can we put that to? Gospel. Gospel. Uh, either Elvis in the garden or The Prettiest Flowers. Mm -hmm. Prettiest Flowers, great song. So we'll have to find a copy of that. But it's one of those things, you're going to take something that I enjoyed as a weekend trip and make a memory for me. And that's what doing the DVDs is about. Mm -hmm. and, and it's something um, every family, you know, Father's Day, Mother's Day, whatever. And I'm giving you a bunch of pictures that you're going to do a story of our family. So yeah. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Make her cry, would you? No, nah, don't yeah. cry about Put that some stuff sappy anymore. music to it. Life goes on. Hey, Life uh, goes I just want to tell people out there, too, those of you who are inventors, John McCain, the presidential candidate, has come up with an offer. He wants the government to award a $300 million prize to whoever can come up with the best electric car. Good, good deal. So. Are you going to work on that? I'm going to try to do the. You're the smartest man I know. I'm going to try to do the electric uh, uh, semi tractor trailer. That'll oh, solve Bill, I would problems. love you forever. I would love you forever. Imagine the power that would take, though. 
Imagine what it's costing us to fill up these fuel tanks today. Yeah. Well, well about a thousand bucks a day per truck. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred dollars a day a per truck. And we were our max was six hundred dollars until nine months ago. So mm -mm. yeah. So three hundred million dollars. That's it's a tough. pretty good incentive. But even with fuel prices, we do want to encourage y'all spend time visiting the area. We are so blessed with beautiful mountains. I've been to yep. your house lately. I'm going back to take mountain estates. There's so many things around us that we can enjoy that really don't cost a lot of money. So you have your gas money in it, pack a picnic or stop at any of the restaurants in the area. Everybody's got deals going on. Everybody's got reasonable prices. Just stop. But remember, where are we going to be on Thursday? Jasper, Georgia at the Sharp Mountain Sharp Grill. Sharp Mountain Grill, Thursday, 8.30 to 10.30. And y'all, you got to show up and guess what? You can go to the Dairy Queen in LJ and guess what you can order today? Sherry Martin. Sherry Martin Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. It is the chocolate you dip the cones in, the wet nuts, and you barely, barely mix it up. And get you a small size because it's rich, rich, rich. But Lord have mercy, is it good. Mm -mm, they, don't put, mm -mm. they don't put lard in it? No, but if you like chocolate and nuts, I can guarantee you, you're going to like that. <laughs> did y'all notice that I had on blue today, you had on blue, and Hannah had on blue? We didn't even talk either, did and, we? And Floyd's daddy had on blue. And see, this I mean, folk, Barry's daddy, Floyd, had on blue. These folks, yeah, duh. These folks out here think we and I coordinate all we this. We don't even talk during the week, guys. We show up here on the set. I haven't that's talked all the to you since last Thursday. Last Thursday, that's mm -hmm. right, that's, that's right. right. We just kind of read each That's other's right. mind. We read each other's mind. Lord have mercy, you better watch out. <laughs> well, you, you said earlier that uh, somebody had a deep mind, and yours is pretty deep because I'm still trying to dig in there. <laughs> I can't find it. It's deep in there somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Well, my mind is on Thursday, and I am going to encourage y'all, welcome you, invite you. Come out Thursday to Sharp Mountain Grill. We'll have the big screen TV. We'll have a new air conditioning unit, and we will be ready to host you there that music, day. Music, music, music. That's right. Music, music, music. 8.30 to 10.30. Now, from North Georgia now today, I'm Sherry Martin. And he's Bill Senior. Have a great day today <laughs> and a better day tomorrow. And we will be here only on ETC3 Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., 6 to 8 p.m. And for you late-nighters, 11.30 to 1.30 a.m. You be here and we'll be here too. I'll be asleep then. No, 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 no. no. I'll be up. <laughs> There's rumor of war and earthquakes and sin on every hand. Don't wait too late to him your heart to give. When he comes down, it'll be too late. There's not much time, you better not wait. When the eastern sky begins to part, you won't be able to give him your heart. When he comes down, it'll be too late.